Paul Morphy, 1837-1884, born into a prominent New Orleans family, is universally considered to be one of the greatest players of all time. He was totally dominant during his very brief chess career, and he was a master of all phases of the game. Morphy is remembered mostly for his brilliant attacking games, but he was also a fine strategist and regularly outplayed his opponents with subtle positional play, not just with his phenomenal tactical mastery. He's one of the earliest chess prodigies, and was defeating masters by the age of 10. After graduating from law school at age 17, Morphy dominated the field in the 1857 American Chess Congress held in New York City. Morphy then took Europe by storm, defeating all the top European players in match play during his extended visit to Europe during the years 1858 to 59. E4, E5, Knight F3, D6, D4, F5. Paul Morphy was not above playing risky, if not downright bad openings at times and this dubious advance should lead to trouble against correct play. The problem with f5 is that it neglects development and weakens the king's side. Knight c3 Another good way to meet this line is bishop c4, e captures d4, knight g5 attacking f7, knight h6 defending the threat, and then castles. Another way to do it would be D captures E5, F captures E4, Knight G5, attacking that pawn on E4, D5, and then E6. Mr. Bird's continuation is perfectly good, too, and should lead to a clear advantage for white. F captures E4. Hmm. This move is also risky. Murphy should have played e captures d4, but I think white also gets an edge with queen captures d4, knight c6, and then bishop b5, pinning that knight and maintaining the queen's centralized position. Knight takes e4, d5. Knight g3. Knight captures e5 looks tempting, but black looks okay after d captures e4, queen h5 check, g6, knight captures g6, h captures g6, and now white has two choices. Let's say he grabs the rook, queen captures h8. Black answers with bishop e6, covering his knight on g8 and developing. He should be okay. Let's say white tries queen captures g6 check instead. That looks more dangerous. Black then reacts with king d7. White checks again, queen f5 check. King back to e8. And now if white wants to win, he's got to play queen to e5 check. But then black has the fine response, bishop e6, exclamation point. Good move. White now takes the rook in the corner, queen captures h8. Black then centralizes queen d5, and I think he's got a good game. e4, knight e5, knight f6, bishop g5. Mr. Bird should start to chip away at Black's strong center with 8f3. I think white has a small edge after the plausible continuation, bishop e6, f captures e4, d captures e4, and then the pinning move, bishop to g5. Bishop d6, knight h5. f3, attacking the center, was again the move of choice. Instead, Mr. Bird violates a basic principle by moving an already developed piece twice in the opening. Now black starts to get the upper hand. Castle kingside. Queen d2. White must be careful not to open up the a5e1 diagonal with moves like c4, 
which will be hammered by bishop b4 check. Queen e8. G4. Bird had obviously overlooked Morphy's last move and apparently panics. Bishop captures f6 was better, with the main point being g captures f6, knight captures f6 check, rook captures f6, queen g5 check, rook g6, knight captures g6, h captures g6, queen captures d5, and the position looks roughly even. In the 1800s, players were much more free and loose with material. This was not such a problem. The art of technique was not nearly as advanced as it is today. Knight takes g4. Knight takes g4. Queen takes h5. Knight e5. Knight c6. Bishop e2. Queen h3. Knight takes c6. B takes c6. Bishop e3. Rook b8. Castle queenside. Rook takes f2. Morphy launches one of the most spectacular sacrificial attacks ever seen in chess. As beautiful as it is, one should not forget that black is a solid pawn ahead and should win without too much difficulty here with normal play. The chance to sacrifice both a rook and a queen was probably irresistible to Morphy, who for all his modesty enjoyed playing to the crowd. But from a purely scientific viewpoint, bishop g4 was a better move. Bishop takes f2. Queen a3. Wow, a spectacular second punch. But unfortunately for Morphy, it doesn't end the game at once. Of course, the queen cannot be taken. If b captures a3, Black delivers made immediately with bishop captures a3. c3. Queen takes a2. b4. Queen a1 check. King c2. Queen a4 check. King b2. People have debated for years whether Morphy could have won after the correct defense king c1. Probably black should then play bishop f5, when the retreat bishop e1 seems to offer white his best hope. Black can then win some material back with queen a1 check, king c2, e3 check, king b3, e captures d2, rook captures a1, rook e8, but a win is far from certain. Gary Kasparov thinks black is slightly better after the further bishop a6, d captures e1 promoting to queen, rook h captures e1, rook takes e1, rook captures e1, bishop captures h2, bishop b7, bishop e4, bishop captures c6, king f7. Probably slight edge is a good assessment, but I doubt if black can actually win against correct play. Another try for black is bishop f5, bishop e1, e3, queen b2, only move, and then a5, trying to rip open the white king's protection. It looks like white would really have his hands full holding off the attack. Bishop takes b4. This can hardly be called a sacrifice because white is forced to soon give up his queen, while also finding his king harassed mercilessly by the remainder of black's forces. C takes b4. Rook takes b4. Check. Queen takes b4. Queen takes b4. Check. King c2. e3. This shot opens up quick access to the b1h7 diagonal, and intensifies black's attack. Bishop takes e3. Bishop f5 check. Rook d3. Queen c4 check. King d2. Queen a2 check.
King D1. Queen B1. Check. Byrd resigned here. White must surrender heavy material, so further resistance was futile.